Morning all, I'm heading out on the VFR today because it's a gorgeous day, but then I don't really need an excuse anyway. I am heading out to meet my wife and daughter for lunch, but I've lots to chat to you about on the way. Some good, some bad, so hop on the back and we'll go for a spin. Well, how are you all? Don't worry, we're not going to church. Not today anyway. Um, lots to chat about. Uh, great to be out again. Uh, it's been a while since I've ridden the FJR. Uh, the FJR? The VFR! Oh my god! I still can't get the FJR out of my head. Uh, let me talk about this briefly. You might have seen that um, uh, new sort of strand I was doing on the channel called the Stuff Review. Uh, where I reviewed this deflector um, in full. If you haven't, obviously, go back and check that out. Uh, delighted with this. It's really uh, keeping the wind noise down inside the helmet. Now, today is a very windy day, actually. Might not look it on camera. Um, but without that little deflector, the wind noise was unbearable. And when I'm doing stuff like this and doing the vlog and stuff, I really found as though I was having to shout just to compensate for the amount of noise in the helmet. Uh, that was with both screens, by the way, this Puig screen and the one before that, which was the Givy screen. That was just unbearable. Um, so Richie Vida, very kindly, uh, recommended this Puig screen. Um, that's what he uses. And look at that. Th that's how windy it was overnight. Did you see that tree there? Uh, so I have no doubt on my uh, little journey today I'm going to encounter a few things like that. So I'll be a little bit careful. Um, so yeah, Richie recommended this screen. Um, now, for me, I mean, the, the screen worked a treat, uh, or does work a treat, rather, and really does throw the wind around you. There is no buffeting whatsoever. However, I still found it a little bit noisy, obviously, compared to the GS screen. So I won't go into it again, because it's all within the video I did called the Stuff Review. Uh, but delighted with the little deflector. It really has quietened down the ride a lot. Um, okay, next thing. It's not so good news, this next one. I'm really gutted. Um, I, I, I've been sort of teasing this on the channel over the last year and a half, I reckon. You know the sculptures uh, videos that I make about the roadside sculptures here in Ireland? Uh, and I've, just, I've become so passionate about them because as I started unearthing one or two stories, turns out literally all of them have amazing stories behind them. And uh, so again, I brought a strand of sculptures uh, to this channel and uh, they're on a, um, I think I call it a playlist within my channel. It's called A Sculpted Journey of Ireland if you want to uh, watch a few of them. I just think they're intriguing stories, great stories. Um, so much so, um, we got a lot of feedback from people outside of the motorcycle community saying, uh, listen, this needs to be going to uh, mainstream TV. So we did that. Uh, I think I'm going left here. So my sat nav says, I shall turn left here. Um, so uh, we, we sort of um, uh, 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 teased it to a couple of broadcasters and lo and behold, Ireland's state broadcaster, RTE, loved it uh, so that was about a year ago um, so we put everything in motion we set up uh, basically a team behind it uh, and uh, my good friend and producer of the project Evan uh, put all of the paperwork together to then go and apply for funding uh, because it's very expensive uh, to um, produce six half-hour programs for for RTE it's uh, very expensive there there's a lot involved in it so um, we had to apply to a government uh, fund. It's a government pot, basically, for television and film production here in Ireland. Uh, and it's called the BAI, which stands for Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. And four times a year, they have a little pot of money, well, a big pot of money, which they give out to productions. Um, and we went all the way and uh, literally just heard that, um, unfortunately, our project this time didn't uh, tick all of the boxes. We don't know why yet. Uh, there's still a few other routes uh, we can take, but um, I mean, I'm no stranger to this process, of course. I mean, this is what I do. And uh, the last big commission we had, which was funded by the BAI, was the, the film I made, um, which actually hit cinemas about four years ago this week, because I keep getting reminders up on my Facebook feed. Uh, that was called The Man Who Wanted to Fly. If you want to check that out, it's everywhere online. Uh, Apple TV and a mm, few Google services, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, so the funding was successful for that film. Unfortunately, it hasn't been for this uh, 
for this TV production, but uh, there are still other avenues we can follow. So it's not completely dead and buried, uh, but I was really, really excited about it. Um, uh, now, uh, saying all that, I wasn't going to be presenting it. I was only going to be shooting it and directing it. But I had a wonderful presenter here in Ireland, uh, who's also a motorcycle enthusiast, uh, who and very well known in Ireland. In fact, I can probably tell you who it is. It's PJ Gallagher. Um, and uh, he's become a bit of a mate as well. Uh, we follow each other online uh, through through the motorbikes. So we're really passionate about that. And I, I just, as soon as I thought of him, I thought he'd be brilliant to present it. Anyway, uh, he was really excited uh, uh, by it as well. But anyway, for the moment, it's not to be. Um, so um, I should probably shut up about that. Uh, one other thing, well, not one other thing. Uh, the next thing I want to talk to you about I'll tell you about was my track training day at Mondello Park in Ireland. It was the best crack, okay? I went uh, to uh, a proper track day about a year and a half ago with a subscriber who contacted me and said, Dave, he said, uh, do you fancy this? He says, uh, we've both got the same bikes. I've been following you for a while. He said, I think we're the same personality. We'll get on. Um, let's go and do the track day. So we did that a year and a half ago. We had the most amazing day. Uh, we struck up a great friendship. Unfortunately, John then passed away uh, a few months later uh, with a brain aneurysm. And uh, I sort of really couldn't go back to the racetrack for a while after that because it was always, a, well, not always, it was the thing that himself and myself did together. I was really upset about this. Anyway, uh, I obviously uh, had healed a little bit and last week I um, went to Mondello for a, not a fully fledged race day, um, in fairness, it was a, a track training day and I thought I needed this because I was a bit rusty. Um, especially after the winter we'd had here in uh, Ireland and then I hadn't re it was the RS660 of course that I took to the day and I hadn't really been out much on it I hadn't done good spins on roads and got the knee down and all that for a while so I went to to this track training day and uh, oh my god uh, I sort of I wasn't sure how I felt when I came away because I was a little bit uh, ashamed of myself at how little I knew I mean I don't know what I was thinking when I went along with John to the actual tr uh, race day you know I knew nothing so the track training day was brilliant. Uh, I, c I can't say enough about it, actually. It cost me 155 euro, okay, for the full day. Where's this guy going? No indicator. Can't help but beep the horn. I, I mean, honest to God, uh, I could have been overtaking him there. Anyway, you know the crack, lads. Um, so, yeah, 155 euro was for the whole day. Um, and uh, there was 30 students like myself, but better than that, there was 15 instructors. So it was literally, well, obviously do the maths, two, two students to one instructor. And we were, on, uh, we were in the classroom in the morning, and then we were on track all afternoon. It was the most valuable day I think I've ever had on a motorbike. Obviously, you can take away your skills to use on the road as well. Um, but I, I, I learned so much, uh, it was really, really incredible. And I've been out a few, a, a few times on the RS660 since that last week. Uh, not just the RS660, actually on other bikes as well. And um, I don't know if it's in the head or if it just built up the confidence within me uh, as a rider generally. But I feel since that day that I'm a better rider. There's another thing uh, I did. Um, uh, prior to that uh, about two months ago now back in February was it um, uh, a subscriber called Brian Kavanagh hope he doesn't mind me calling his name I shall get proper details actually um, in fact I'll put his details below because he's uh, a riding instructor but he's an ex-guard uh, for those of you who don't live in Ireland that's a policeman uh, but he's an ex-police rider um, so, I mean, obviously those guys are at the top of the tree and he's an advanced instructor and he's uh, accredited with ROSPA over here. Um, um, don't ask me what it stands for because I can't think of it off the top of my head. But uh, basically these guys are the blood bikers, the marshals for any big event, um, guard riders, you know, uh, like I say, top of the tree stuff. So 
Brian had uh, been watching my channel and spotted I wouldn't say flaws as such in my riding. <laughs> he, he was very nice the way he put it, but he sent me a message, then we had a phone call, and he said he could help me improve <laughs> on different ways, uh, 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 different um, aspects of my riding. Uh, oh, where am I going? Uh, I should have turned right there. That didn't look like a right turn, so I'm just going to carry on. Um, would I fancy going along to meet him? And uh, so off I went and spent the day with Brian, a wonderful man, great, great crack as well. He looks like that fella, the actor, who was in um, Roadhouse many years ago with Patrick Swayze. Um, not, not Patrick Swayze, the um, chap with the silver hair, uh, hard as nails. <laughs> and uh, who was also, if I'm not mistaken, in the Lady Gaga film, uh, A Star Is Born. Uh, uh, um, the older guy again. He looks like him. Um, uh, <laughs> I couldn't help but thinking that for the whole day. Anyway, uh, great crack. So, my learning process started there really back in February with Brian. And uh, I sort of came home that night thinking, oh my God, you know, I've been riding, riding well, back riding again, as you know, uh, for a couple of years. I had a 30 year gap in between. Um, but I came home that night thinking I really do need to have more tuition because I learned so much from Brian and that's why I booked the track training day. Um, so that's where we are at the moment folks. I think I'm turning right here. Just check no one's behind me because I'm slamming the brakes on there. Brian would be proud of me there. <laughs> and, uh, and the other thing to say is that uh, I've had to make a few videos, folks, to put on the shelves because um, I'm heading away tomorrow again back to um, my day job, which is uh, a cameraman on... Um, well, I'm a freelance cameraman, so obviously I work on a load of shows, but my big show every year... Uh, I don't know where you're best watching this video now, but uh, if you're in the UK and Ireland, surely you'll know the show that I work on most of the year, uh, which is Come Dine With Me um, for Channel 4. So I'm heading over there tomorrow for a few weeks. Um, I'm in Leeds for the first week, and then where are we the second week? Bristol for the second week. I'm actually, um, uh, during that middle weekend, that cro crossover weekend, um, I'm heading down near uh, Oxford. Um, so I contacted Andy, the Missenden flyer, to see if he's around for a spot of lunch and a coffee. Um, so uh, hopefully I'll get to shoot the breeze. There's lots of potholes and the roads are all dug up everywhere because of the bad weather and the amount of rainfall we've had here. So I am uh, taking it fairly easy here. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I'll grab a spot of lunch with Andy for a catch up as well. Um, I'm sure there'll be a photo or two which comes out of that, if indeed it happens and he's not away sunning himself or uh, riding in Alaska or all these wonderful trips he's doing of late. And then that's what I want to pick his brains about. First of all, uh, I want to ask him, when did he win the lottery? <laughs> he's a top man, Andy. I've met him before. He's great crack. Um, so uh, other than that, folks, uh, we're nearly at um, this little restaurant. Now, I'll show you a few photographs hopefully um, at the end of this video when I get there my wife one day I swear I'll get my wife on the back of a bike so she said no I'll meet you out there I'll drive there um, and I'm like no it's only like 40 minutes from where we live you know come on just hop on the back of the bike nope 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 it's <laughs> fair enough uh, uh, so she's taking my eldest daughter with her as well my eldest daughter is uh, for those of you who are interested in my personal life um, I'm very proud dad at the moment. I've got four kids. My eldest daughter has just um, qualified. Is qualified the correct word? Well, she's just been offered a place in a university over in England. I won't. Uh, I won't mention it just in case she doesn't want me to. Um, but uh, she's going to become a vet. Uh, something which is very close to her heart, especially where we live and all the animals we have. Uh, and in fact, she's probably a fully quite qualified vet already, without her knowing it. Uh, so yeah, she starts a study this September for five years over in England. So uh, last weekend, me and Mum went over uh, and we had a tour of the campus and saw where she's going to be staying and met some of the tutors and uh, we had the most incredible weekend. 
it was brilliant and uh, you know it's only uh, a Ryanair flight for 30 quid so uh, so that filled up last weekend which is why I'm out uh, today uh, making this video um, otherwise uh, I'll be straight back from the, the job I spoke about earlier, come down with me uh, and literally be straight on a bike to try and get something out the following weekend for you. So I'm thinking by the time I get back from come down, I'll have used up all of the uh, the videos on the shelf. Um, okay, that's uh, probably it, folks, for now. Why don't you sit back and enjoy the, the scenery for a little bit and then I'll switch the camera on again when I come into Castle Blaney which is where this uh, little cafe is. I, uh, I, just before I do switch the camera off, of course, I mean, um, there's always something else for me to chat about. Um, and uh, I went to this cafe a few weeks ago. I was filming up here um, for another show. And uh, the producer, actually, uh, uh, the producer who was going in on the sculptures with Evan. Now, Evan likes his food, to put it politely. And he always sources out a good place to eat, lunch and dinner. And um, so anyway, he discovered this place and he took me along and oh wow, it was just fabulous. So, and it turns out, like I say, it's only about 40 minutes from where I live. So <laughs> even better, winner, winner, yummy dinner. So that's where I'm headed. So we're just approaching Casa Blini now, which is where the uh, the cafe is. Um, and uh, of course, I, I know you're all dying to know how I'm getting on with the VFR. Um, Guys, it has turned into a love affair. It really has. Um, I, I just love everything about the bike. I now know exactly what Richie Vida was talking about. I mean, I wanted one of these when they first came out, you know. Was it the late 90s, early 2000s? Um, and uh, dare I say it, this is one of the bikes which probably got me back into biking. Even though I only just bought, one, bought this recently uh, and had a few other bikes before it. But it's just one of those bikes you know what i mean when you look at it it does it just excites you um this bike does everything and more for me can't wait to go away on it uh, in the summer on some trips um actually the you know every cloud has a silver lining what i was saying about the sculptures program uh, not happening uh, for the moment not until we <laughs> find some new uh, route or new avenue of funding um basically the sculptures was going to tie me up all summer uh, producing that for tv um so the the silver lining is of course and uh, you know i on the back of that i was wondering how i was going to possibly do all the uh, things for this channel and uh, you know go to all the places i want to visit and i want to do more mountain passes i want to do more trips around ireland and who knows maybe it's, uh, even a trip further afield but now i can of course um so without that sort of workload without that commitment it means uh, I can put, uh, well, enjoy myself a bit more <laughs> for this channel. Um, so, of course, I still need to pay the bills. Uh, so, I haven't quite retired yet. Um, so, that's how I'm getting on with the VFR. And, uh, oh, yeah, and a lot of those trips, I should say, I'm planning on this VFR. Where's he going now? Yeah, I'm planning on the v VFR. So, I uh, really can't wait to get away. Um on this bike in the summer and it feels like summer right now doesn't it it's, it's gorgeous day i love these old irish streets you know really wide streets you can imagine them back in the heyday with the markets and whatever else and uh, a real great character about these towns and uh, great people as well oh my god the, the crack <laughs> the crack is mighty so the say in ireland and uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I love towns like this. The other thing you might have seen, uh, I'm going to end the video now on a negative, which is terrible. I don't like doing that, but I have to talk about it. You might have seen the short I did. This uh, person is reversing into that parking space. So that gives me a little bit chance uh, to finish off with this because the cafe I'm talking about is just down here on the right hand side. Uh, yeah, you might have seen the short I did about the Scorpion ADX2 helmet that I own. Uh, uh, I think it's unsafe. It shouldn't even. It's not fit for purpose. It shouldn't be on the market. I made a review when I first got it because I was delighted with it. Um, since riding it, uh, yeah, uh, lethal. Uh, it nearly killed me. Um, and uh, I won't go into too much detail again. Like I say, I've already uh, done a, a video on that. Um, but the peak uh, came loose um, because of the vibration. Um, the peak came loose. Um, and uh, it came off at motorway speeds, literally nearly pulling me off the bike. Um, 
I think I can find a spot here because we've just passed the the cafe. In fact, I'll just ride around and see if I can park outside the cafe. So, uh, sorry to end on a negative, but if you're thinking about buying a Scorpion ADX2, don't because uh, the company. Um, I wonder if I can park there. I know it's no parking. Oh no, it's for the pharmacy. Um, the company Scorpion, uh, of course, have not got back to me. That's the cafe. I know I'm talking about too many things at once here. Uh, West Street, number two West Street. That's the cafe I'm going to for lunch. Um, and the company that I bought the helmet from, the um, the the dealer, if you like, which was fcmoto.de. It's just the usual um, bollocksology, uh, for want of a better word. I might try and park in there. Oh, I'm taking up a car space then. Uh, you know, or send photographs, do this, do that. Have you got your receipt? Oh, my God. You know, um, I mean, it was a fairly cheap helmet, but, you know, um, it pays dividends, really, to spend a few quid on a helmet. And that's what I shall be doing very soon. I'm definitely not buying another... Um, definitely not buying uh, another Scorpion helmet as long as I live. Uh, and I wouldn't care. The ADX-1, which I have, is th it's a brilliant helmet. Different design. Completely different peak. It doesn't vibrate. Um, so yeah, motorway speeds, when your peak comes off on one side, it, it literally nearly tore me off the bike. The only thing which saved my life was because I was going at good speed, uh, 120 kilometers per hour, uh, keeping up with the traffic on the motorway. Um, and the momentum of the bike kept me upright. Um, anyway, it doesn't bear thinking about. Sorry to end on a negative. Um, I shall play out this video with a couple of shots of the food um, in here. Thanks a million folks for tuning in. Uh, Dave Perry, really good TV. I'm absolutely starving, so I'm out of here.